Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy. My name is Catherine. And it really is good to be here with you today. I hope that all is well with you. I hope that things are going well for you. And I hope that you are experiencing the joy of the Lord. Well, Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy is a devotional Bible study session in which we look at the Word of God as He gives us fresh manner each and every day. We also look at the book of Proverbs, and we believe that Proverbs is the manual for living. So we have been creating the habit of reading the chapter within Proverbs that corresponds with the day. And then we ask Holy Spirit to give us words or phrases that really speak to us. We kind of deep dive deeper into the scripture and look for that word for the day that will help to uh, get us forward, move us forward in him. And the theme for our year this year is spring forth, that God wants us to grow in him and to grow in his unchanging grace. And so we have built this foundation on Jesus Christ. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. So what we want to do for this year and for the rest of our lives is to rest on his unchanging grace. And grace is the number five, and that number is the number for Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. And it's because of grace Grace, his grace, unmerited favor, which has blessed us. Though in spite of our shortcomings, we don't look to that and, and condemn ourselves. No, Jesus Christ has come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So he's expecting us to lean on, to press in to his grace and mercy. And he promises to give us grace and mercy in our time of need. So we don't just fall into discouragement, which is a weapon of the enemy. The enemy uses discouragement to cause people to turn away from God. That's how he pries open your heart, by making you feel hopeless and discouraged. So we are learning here at Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy how to war against the enemy. And I have been looking at this book from Dr. David Jeremiah, which is Spiritual Warfare, um, Armor of the Believer, and it's a study guide. It has been so good. He also has a book which he calls Victorious. Uh, which um, I started reading, but I like the study guide, especially for you, my Wisdom Connection family, as I say good morning to you all, because it really is important for us to know our enemy, the devil. His name is Satan. He used to be called Lucifer, but he is the deceiver of the brethren. That is what of his main tactics or strategy uh, for this era and this time that we're in is to deceive people and make them compromise their salvation. But God wants us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, not to lean onto our own understanding, but in all our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our path. And that is the key to acknowledge God in everything that we do, to wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Uh, and waiting requires patience, which is a characteristic of the Holy Spirit. We are developing in the garden of our hearts the fruit of the Spirit. So we need to plant the seeds of patience. We need to plant the seeds of trust. We need to plant the seeds of belief in God. Plant the seeds of love, joy, peace, kindness, compassion. Plant the seeds of truth. Plant the seeds of self-control. 
All of these are different seeds that we need to plant in our garden that they may bear fruit. And uh, that fruit, we will be able to eat of it and not keep it for ourselves, but give it to others. Uh, right now, the, the fruit of patience is big. The fruit of self-control is huge. The fruit of faithfulness, being faithful. And we've been talking about habits. And habits require faithfulness. Habits, if you're going to do something, you need to do it every day. And the Lord has told us, if you read Psalms 1, which we read, uh, which Francesca and Thelma read yesterday, um, Francesca read yesterday, Psalms 1, it says that we need to meditate on the Lord day and night. And those who meditate and think of God and keep their minds stayed on Him, He will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on Him because He trusts in Him. And that happens when we meditate on the Word of God because you could have your mind on God, but your meditation is not aligned with the Word of God. So you need to make sure that you are aligned. I need to make sure that I'm aligned with the Word of God. And how do you become aligned with the Word of God? Is that you got to study to show yourself approved. A workman not needing to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the Word of Truth. And so here at Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy, we've decided that we're going to read through the Bible. And we're going to read through it with Dr. David Jeremiah. He has given us some scriptures here. Now, um, I am not one to say that you have to do it this way. That's not how I function. Um, I, because each and every one of us are different. But the point is, is that one needs to get a full understanding of the Bible and the Word. And I think that reading through the Bible or listening, you could do it through a podcast. I've been using YouTube to help me. They have this scrolling um, channel. You know, you could get each book. And if you have a couple of hours, you can listen to it um, and get it done. You could read through the whole book of that Bible with them. And they have the, the scrolling text. And you, so you can get it through your eye gate and your ear gate. There are different people who are reading through the Bible that you can read with them. Um, but the point is, is that you want to study the Bible. You want to get a full, comprehensive look at what God is saying from the Old Testament all the way through the New Testament. The, uh, uh, and so it is important to do that. Um, uh, many times I've read through the New Testament. So I've done that number of times. But really the Old Testament, I, I haven't uh, really spent the time to read through the whole um, um, Old Testament like how I am doing now. I've read parts of it. I've read books of it. I've read, I know of it. You know, over time I've covered it. But to read it all through within a year you know, years time and really meditate on it, um, is new for me for the whole Bible. And so I am encouraging you all to do that. Why? Because you want to rest. You want to have that solid foundation. And this morning I woke up with the phrase that I rest on his unchanging grace. I rest on his unchanging grace. And when I, when I read that, I rest on his unchanging grace. Uh, it, it reminded me of the fact that the Old Testament corresponds with the New Testament. The Old Testament is God's grace, setting up God's grace and his way of wanting to, to deliver us from evil. And um, what he wanted to do with, with what had happened in the Garden of Eden. And he knew of this from the foundation of the earth because God is not surprised about anything. God the Father, he's not surprised about anything. And he wants to strengthen us. He wants us all to grow in grace. So his unchanging grace, you can see it all the way from the Old Testament through to the New Testament. Now the New Testament in in uh, in Tess. Tess 
Thessalonians and in um, Revelation uh, and, and different books. God And in Matthew, God speaks to us. Jesus Christ told us about things to come. Prophetic words in the, in the New Testament. Um, and Paul has told us about it. And John, the Apostle John, wrote Revelation, which tells us about what is to happen in the future. And so we are not caught off guard. When you see different things happening, it shouldn't shake you because you are resting on God's unchanging grace. And so the rest of that um, phrase comes out of the song, On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand, All Other Ground is Sinking Sand. And so the Word of God is our solid rock. That's what we're sitting on. That's what we're resting on. That's what we're standing on. And Ephesians tells us, about those who build their house upon the sand and those who build their house on the rock. And so we want to build our house on the rock, that when the storms of life come, that we are not easily shaken, that we can stand, that our houses, our spiritual houses, will be fortified because we're built on the rock, the solid rock, Jesus Christ. And so that is the message basically for today, to build your house on Christ the solid rock. Um, and because he is who we should rest in. Now, I talked to you all about resting before. Rest on resting in the Lord. Resting in the Lord is a, a place of peace. When you are able to rest in the Lord, you are in a place of peace, peace. And so with all of the things that are happening, wars, rumors of wars, things that are happening, uh, it's just like the enemy's just throwing all that he can into this particular time frame because he knows that Jesus Christ is coming back soon. And we know that he's coming back soon because he's coming back for his bride. He's been speaking to his bride to, um, to pray to fast, to take communion, to uh, assemble together with others. What the enemy is trying to do is to stop people from praying, to stop people from communing with God and communing with others. Uh, the Last Supper is a communion with God. It's a uh, remembering, membering back, putting the members, the bone, the structure of God back together again through the church and with your, with your own body. Um, coming to an alignment with God. The enemy doesn't want that. So he doesn't want you to think that that is important. He want, God wants us to take his word like medicine, to heal our bodies, to strengthen us, to get us in the position to be like him. Hallelujah. That we should, our imagery should change. Our thoughts about who we are in Christ should be changing. We should be in that place in which we are um, realizing that we need to come up higher in Christ, come up higher, especially in this day and age when things are shaking. And right now, everything that can be shaken is being shaken. I don't know if you know um, Jerry Savelle. He was um, a beautiful, beautiful... Um, he was part of the faith movement with... Um, Kenneth Copeland and um, some of the others, they're part of his um, with um, Jerry Savelle. Let's see, who else? Creflo Dollar, I think, was with them. Um, um, and um, there's another one. I can't remember his name. He's from New Orleans, too. But uh, that faith ministry was so fantastic. He was, that, that was birthed with them. And Jerry Savelle was part of that ministry. And I used to watch. Uh, I used to watch them in the '80s, and um, it was it was really good because um, we needed to know how to to war with faith, how to believe God, to to trust God's word, um, and you know that whole time there with Oral Roberts and the faith movement, faith for healing, faith for deliverance, 
faith for um, provision because it says without faith it is impossible to please God because you must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them who diligently seek him. And when, when they first started off, they were really sound. The doctrine was sound. But did you know that over time the enemy knows how to just come on in and he just knows how to just taint everything and then he's just got people starting thinking, claim it and uh, believe it and claim it and, and all of that stuff. Just, you know, just the deception. He's always throwing stuff in to counterfeit what God is doing. But Jerry Savelle um, was very good in, in you could listen to, to Charles Capps and all of them with that faith movement. And he has passed away as of Monday. He passed away. Oh, and I had just listened to him. It's amazing. I had just listened to him at the top of the year in January, uh, his word for the the year. And he was seeming so alive and vibrant and just excited about God. Uh, and uh, just to know that it just, he didn't make it to the Passover. You know, he didn't make it to the Passover. This is Nisan, new beginning. He's not going into this new promised land. He's went to, to heaven, <laughs> you know, but he's not here on earth with us anymore. So God needs us to step up, hallelujah, and move into this new dimension that God has for us. And that is of wisdom. We are of wisdom. Wisdom is what we need for today. And that is why um, God is giving us the desire to be wise, to study the book of Proverbs, and to look for God's wisdom throughout the Bible. And then not to just look for it, read it, but to study it, to, to um, make it a habit, to make it a part of your everyday living. And so that's what I want to encourage you all this morning with, that word, that we rest on his unchanging grace. You know that in on every stormy highest um deal, something like that. I think that the 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 song goes, but it's on Christ the solid rock I stand. But that where we rest on His unchanging grace. That is what I want you all to remember, and re remember that that is what I have been holding on to. That's the phrase that I woke up with. I rest on His unchanging grace. So no matter what happens around us, no matter what the circumstances may look like, for today, this April um, 18, 2024, you rest on his unchanging grace. Okay, the other point that I want to bring out to you too is that this is Nissan 10, Nissan 10, um, this whole time when Jesus Christ enters into the the city of Jerusalem where they're singing Hosanna Hosanna in the highest you know they're singing Hosanna to him um, and they are calling him their king he Jesus enters into Jerusalem on a donkey right and so he's entering in this is your time to enter into this new phase of victory your of of what God has for you and, uh, you know, celebrate God, uh, the miraculous. This is Nisan, the, the month of miracles, the beginning of miracles in your life. And uh, the, the Jesus Christ has entered in. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm telling you that he is the way to go. Jesus Jesus, ask Jesus to come into your life and to lead your life. You need Jesus. You need Jesus Christ, the Savior. He is the way. There is nothing on this earth that you could depend on. Not a thing. You can't depend on the government. You can't depend on your family members. You can't depend on your homes, your finances, your money. You can't depend on money. No, much, no matter how much money, you could be a billionaire. You cannot depend on that money because when Jesus Christ calls you, no matter how much billions you have, Jesus, could, um, and he says, it's time for you to go. Out you go. That's it. And how you lived your life will determine your future. Mm -hmm. Will you go to hell or will you be uh, going to heaven? Would you be part of God's kingdom or you're part of Satan's kingdom? And kingdoms, Satan's kingdom is headed to hell. Okay? 
That's where they're going. I believe in hell and brimstone and fire. And if you don't live right, you're going to go to hell. If you don't accept Jesus Christ, first and foremost, because the entrance is Jesus. Jesus is the one who, who is the door. He is the door. He said, I am the door. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And man has been trying. The enemy is the deceiver of the brethren, and he tries to give you all kinds of ways. This Unitarian thing, it does not work. Mm -mm, there's no power in that. That is a form of godliness, but, uh, but denying the power thereof. And we do not want to deny the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, the cross, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, the unity of the brethren, the love that God has for us, the fruit of the Spirit, the Spirit of God. We want to be on full, heightened, full up to capacity and running over with God. Hallelujah. My cup is running over with joy. My cup is running over with peace. My cup is running over goodness and mercy. He's, is, um, what? Uh, Psalms 23. Yes. He fills your cup. Yes. Hallelujah. He pours into you your cup and your cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy is following me all the days of my life. And not just this life. You People got to stop thinking about this being it. This is not it. This is the, the place where you are learning to grow your faith, grow your belief in God, grow your, your, your spiritual man and woman. This is the place where you grow your love. This is the place where you learn to, to bring heaven into earth. Hallelujah. You grow your faith. You're able to bring heaven to earth. This is the place. This is the place. This is the teaching. This is the, even for Jesus Christ, when he came here, he was in heaven, right? Jesus was in heaven. He came to earth. He put on the earth suit uh, when he was birthed by Mary and the Holy Ghost. And he had to go through an earthly experience. He experienced um, all of these different things that we experience. And he was God in the flesh. So God was experiencing our earth, what had Satan had done and this new thing. And so mm -hmm, he says, okay, so that's what it is. And he was our example. Jesus was our example. God the Father sent Jesus here. And Jesus is our example. And Jesus is the one who, um, <coughs> who died for us. He's the one. He is the word. He's the one who spoke this creation of this earth into being. Hallelujah. Jesus, the son of God. He wanted his own plan. He wanted earth. Mm -hmm. And want his own territory, his own kingdom come. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. And the father God said, here, you could have earth. Mm -hmm. But he had to toil through it. He had to toil through the process. Hallelujah. Father God gave Jesus his son, earth. Mm -hmm. This is his, my father's world. His father created, he said, yeah, you can have earth. Well, Lucifer got thrown down in here too. So he said, oh, I can handle, because he said, I am Jehovah Saboeth. Mm -hmm. I can handle Satan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, God had a, a way. And so this, this is, that's why in the, in the end, if you read the end of Revelation, there's going to be a new heaven, a new earth coming down from heaven. So this is our place and time to learn so that when, you know, are you going to be faithful? Are you going to be faithful to God? Are you going to be faithful? Are you going to, are you going to do like Satan and um, be deceived and deceive others? Or are you going to be faithful? And so that is what we're working on. Our faithfulness, we're working on um, being like Jesus. We're working on gain, gaining a new identity in Christ Jesus. We're working on being the bride of Christ. And that means that a lot of our selfishness, the things that we want to do, that we've got to put them aside and decide that we're going to do the will of the Father. That is what Jesus Christ did. He said, okay, Father God, I'm going to put aside my will 
and I'm, I'm going to follow your will. Your kingdom come, your will be done. What do you have? I'm going to follow you. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to give you, God, the glory. You deserve the glory. You deserve everything. That's what Jesus Christ did. And he said, I don't do anything that I don't do anything that my father doesn't do. Everything I do is what my father's told me to do, and I'm doing that. And he had the Holy Ghost to help him to, to do what God said, the power of the Holy Ghost. And he was our exemplar of how we are to live as sons and daughters of God. We are now are ye the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what you shall be, but when he comes, you shall be like him. For you shall see him as he is. Our, our goal is to, our goal here is to become more and more like Jesus. To, to have a mind change. You know, the soul, our soul. That's where the battlefield of our existence is, is in the mind and in the soul. Your soul, your will, and your emotions. Your spirit is there but that is what we're growing our spirit that our spirit man overtakes the um the um the 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 mind you know that we have the mind of christ and it's a process it's the mind of christ it's not it's a process we've got to go through the process and it's a daily process so you know, either you're going to do God, do this for God, or you're going to do it for the devil, one or the other. And you, there's, there's two sides here. There's God's side, and there's the devil's side. Choose choose you this wet day who you're going to serve. Who or do you want to serve? What kind of lifestyle do you want to have? Do you want to live uh, what appears to be a lavish lifestyle here on earth, but that ends with death and destruction? Or you want to um, live a life for Christ? and have eternal life where you live in peace with God for eternity. I choose eternity. I'm choosing eternity. I'm choosing eternity. This world is temporal. You know, I'm choosing eternity. Eternity. I want to be with Jesus Christ for eternity. I want to be with, in, with God the Father for eternity. I want the Holy Spirit to walk with me for eternity, forever and ever and ever. So I have decided that God is the way to go. The Bible is the true word of God. The Bible is the truth. The Bible is the truth. The Bible is the truth. No compromise. No. And that means that every day when I wake up, I got to repent, ask God to cleanse me in my thoughts, my imaginations, my dreams, my imagery. Um, if there's something that I did wrong to expose it, ask for forgiveness, turn, repent means to turn from doing the wrong way and turn and do the right way. Now, am I perfect? No, I'm not, but I'm striving for perfection. I'm moving and pressing into God. Hallelujah. And thank God that I can rest on his unchanging grace. Yes. And when I get it right, heaven and God and Father God is happy. When I do it wrong, he says, okay, that's all right, Catherine. You know, just repent and learn the lesson so that you don't have to keep repeating the same lesson over and over and over again. He is a good father. He loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves me. And think of God as your heavenly father. Think of a good father. If you you know, think about what you think a good father is like. A good father is patient. A good father teaches. A good father corrects. A good father gives instruction. A good father um, gives you good gifts. You know, gives you good gifts. My daddy used to give me some good gifts. All right. <laughs> oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning to everybody. You know, I just went on a tantrum there. Thank you for your patience and listening to me. Let me let me just say good morning to you all. Let me slow down now. Now I can slow down and, and greet you all real good. I needed to get that out. Somebody's going to listen to this, and they're going to get that message that Jesus is the way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of this came from... Um, 
reading this book too about spiritual warfare, the armor of the believer. Um, really good. I was reading the chapter on um, identifying the enemy and knowing who Satan is and that he is a great deceiver. Three things that Satan is. He is a great deceiver. He is a great divider. And he is a great destroyer. Those are the three things that Satan is. He's a deceiver, a divider, and a destroyer. And when you realize that that is who Satan is, then you know when, when, when um, to look out for him, his deceptiveness. Uh, so the, you cross-reference whatever it is. You cross-reference uh, this deception with um, the word of God. You cross-reference that. He is a divider. So what do you do? You When you see division happening within your family members and so forth, you know that the enemy is up to something because God is something greater going on. So you, you go to the word of God. And what does God say about that? Um, he's a great destroyer. You know, he's the father of lies. He, he comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. He's one. And, you know, it's so easy to destroy a person's reputation. That could, be, that could happen in a day, in a moment. Your reputation could get destroyed. For, for five minutes of pleasure, you could destroy your reputation. He's a destroyer. You could destroy your health by taking some drug or something. I mean, it's so easy to destroy but it's so it's hard to build up. And that is what Satan does. It's because now you have Christ inside of you. You have a buffer. And God is able to give you the strength to resist the enemy. And the more that you resist, you're strengthening your faith muscle. You're strengthening your ability to resist the enemy. So the enemy is a deceiver, a divider, and a destroyer. If you know that, then you, you know what to look for. You don't fall easily into the trap. The other thing is Satan's personality. Satan's position right now here on earth because of Adam and Eve and them giving his, their power and authority over to Satan. He is a prince. He is a ruler and he is a god. He is the god of this world. He is a ruler. He's a ruler. He rules over people who are in his demonic kingdom. He's the prince of the power of the air. He is a satanic first. Satan's personality. You know, it's it's just good to know your enemy. Know who he is. That you can be aware of the wiles of the devil. Hallelujah. And any good team. We've just been so much into sports. And uh, we know that in sports, any good team, they study the, 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 the opposing team. They study them. Um, and they look at what their enemy is about. They get as much information so that they know how to attack. They know how to defend themselves, and they know how to attack the enemy. And that is what we as, Christ, as believers in Jesus Christ need to do. We need to know our enemy, know the enemy. Don't believe that he doesn't exist. The enemy does exist. How could you not believe Satan? doesn't exist. I mean, evil is rampant. Uh, it's right before you. I, it's, it's so heightened. Here in Boston, they had the satanic temple um, and that the satanic peop, uh, conference right here in Boston. I mean, people, people came here to worship Satan. Now, isn't, and remember we talked about we, and God overpowered them. We prayed, the saints prayed, people prayed, and what they thought was going to be a big thing fizzled out to nothing. Why? Because we serve a great God. Yes. He's a great God. Hallelujah. We serve the almighty God. So we've got to know that he is just an angel. He's on the same rankings as Michael. He's not as powerful as, as God. He's not God. He's not like our God. Our God is the creator of the universe. <laughs> we serve Almighty God. Hallelujah. So this is this is the training God ground. We we're learning to war in the spirit uh, through the our words. We war 
in prayer. We war in prayer and declarations and decrees. We decree what God says. That's why it's important to know the word of God. That is your sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That is why knowing your Bible, memorizing the word is so critical for these times. All right. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Uh, uh, the reason why I'm going on with that so much is because Dr. David Jeremiah's topic for today is spiritual battlefield. Let me read my notes. I really ranted and raved about that. Boy, I was that was a holy ghost. Hallelujah. Yeah, so good morning to you all again. Thank you for the likes. Those who hit the like button, I really appreciate that. Yes, you are a blessing machine. That's what I want you to know. Each and every one of you, my Wisdom Connection family and Wisdom Connection seekers and those who are watching, you are a blessing machine machine you are a blessing machine and i and it says a uh, positive change i rest on his unchanging grace i rest on his unchanging grace that is what you need to rest in no matter what the situation or circumstances that are coming in your life that is what you need to rest on you need to have faith in god and rest on jesus rest means that you're not worrying Rest means that you're not anxious. He says, be not anxious for anything, but with prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passeth all understanding will keep your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. So resting is a state of peace. And God has given us the spirit of peace. For he has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So when you're in a state of peace, then you're in a state of rest. And that is what the Holy Spirit offers you. So no matter what situation you may go, go through, because we all go through trials and temptations and different experiences, so that we pass this all understanding. Yes, so that rest is so important, rest. Rest on his unchanging grace. Now, on his, who's, who's, uh, who are you resting in? So I am resting on his, his being Jesus, his unchanging grace, his, Jesus. Jesus Christ died for us, for our healing, our deliverance. He is our salvation. He's our savior. And so everything that we base our lives on should be on Jesus. Uh, you, you pray to Jesus for your family members. You pray to Jesus for healing and deliverance. You pray to Jesus. Jesus is your, um, source of strength and help. You get comfort from Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You go to, to the Father in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Thy kingdom come. He says, if you ask any the, the Father anything in my name, in Jesus' name, that he will hear you. So that is where our comfort lies. That's where our rest is in because we're not coming in our own strength, but we're coming in the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we rest on his, Jesus, his unchanging. God's grace towards you is not going to shift or change. Hallelujah. His unchanging changing grace his unchanging grace how the unchanging means that god is is not going to be fickle like we are you know sometimes i just change my mind all the time <laughs> about certain things you know is we just got to be consistent his unchanging his grace is unchanging we can bank on it we can depend on it and grace grace is his unmerited favor. We have favor through God. We have mercy through God. His grace, his love, his grace is sufficient for us. His grace is what we know is going to help us no matter what happens in our life. No matter what happens. Um, the three Hebrew boys, uh, when the when the when when the king wanted to to throw them into the fiery Nebuchadnezzar want to throw them into the fire. They said, it doesn't matter, King Nebuchadnezzar, but we are going to trust in God. We are not bowing down 
to whatever it is that you have. We're going to trust God. And if he saves us, fine. If he doesn't save us, fine. You know, that, the, but we, are, we shall not bow down. And that's what God wants us to do, to stand on his un, unchanging grace. And that's where on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. So how do we stand on that grace? Is that we stand in praise. Praise is our weapon against the enemy. Judah, this is the month in Nisan where we move forward, our right foot forward in praise. Praise. So instead of um, mourning or crying or all of that, we get the scriptures that God is our healer. God is our deliverer. God is our Jehovah Jireh. God is our Jehovah Rapha. God is our Jehovah Sabahoth. God is our uh, El Shaddai. God is our, we, we rest on his unchanging grace. And we, we are calling on him and we, we go forward because we are resting. We can laugh. We can pray. We can sing songs of victory uh, for his mercy endureth. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy. Yes, he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy. Yes, he is good. Oh, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. For he is worthy, worthy. Oh, he is good, yes, he is good. For he is worthy, worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is good. And so you trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Say, I will trust in the Lord with all my heart. I will lean not unto my own understanding, but in all my ways I will acknowledge him, and he shall direct my path. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. It doesn't seem like things are getting better. It doesn't seem like things will. But God wants you to trust in him. And Antonio, I think you were saying something about someone in, in ICU. Yeah, that is what you got to do. You got to hold on in faith. He said, my sister is in ICU. I have to fight. Yeah, you got to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding yeah, not our own understanding, but in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Yeah, so your tantrum should be in praise. Hallelujah. If you're going to, if you say holy religious tantrum, that should be a praise. You should go into, into a, a, a praise throughout the day. Just say, thank you, Lord, for healing my sister. Thank you, Lord, for delivering. Thank you, Lord, whatever it is. Oh, Lord, I thank you because all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Do just pray. Go into prayer and fasting um, and put down your plate. Because some things come with prayer and fasting. Her healing will come with prayer and fast. So you've got to go in there. When I think how Satan is, is the accuser of the world, all I visualize is his meeting to destroy Job. Yes. Uh, Francesca says, we pray right now for your sister, brother Antonio, that she, by Jesus stripes, she is healed. As we say this, God will restore her health and make her whole again in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. And so you have to have the capacity to believe God. This is a test of your faith. Do you believe God? And then this is your, your test to know, well, do you trust God? You know, no matter what the decision may be, do you trust God? Do you, do you believe God? Think of David. That's why it's good to read the, through the Bible. We just read about David, how he, uh, his baby was there. Um, he, 
he had uh, had an adulterous affair with Bathsheba, and the baby was birthed. But then the the baby um, died. He would, but he went into prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting, and he said, "I'm going to trust God." He said, "I'm going to trust God to make the decision." And I know that he is a healer. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And if it's not your time for your sister to go, your faith, your belief system, will she will be restored in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. But by faith, you've got to stand in the gap. Um, King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, he's another one. Uh, he was given... Um, he said, get your house in order because you're going to be going now. Uh, the, the prophet came and told him, get your house in order because you're going to be going. Now. He, he said he went into prayer and fasting and God heard him and gave him 15 more years. So many people have gone into ICU, gone into the most, everybody thought they were dead in the coma and all of that stuff. And God revived them. But you've got to speak words of faith to your family members. You've got to have the capacity to believe God and hold on to God for her. Hallelujah. And that uh, anybody with any negative talk, out the door they go. They can't go in to see her if they're going to be crying and moaning and all of that. No. If you're going to stand in faith, stand in faith. Hallelujah. Rest on his unchanging grace. Well, Obviously, Antonio, this word is for you and your family to rest on his unchanging grace. I, I can't see anything else. And all of that that I was talking about has to be a personal message to you and your family to rest on his unchanging grace. And, you know, I just uh, we encourage you here and know that Christ is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Yankee sister says, Satan and I have a battle each and every day, and I have a deeper steadfastness with God's armor. Amen, Thelma. That is good. Uh, T. Hopper said, when I think how Satan is the accuser of the brethren, all I visualize is his meeting to destroy Job. Yes. Francesca says, we pray right now for your sister, which we did. Um, you are a blessing. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, passes all understanding. And this may be a time in which your family um, will either be drawn closer together. Hallelujah. Hopefully they will be drawn closer together and it will strengthen. And, you know, these things help people to think about life. You know, that life is short and you've got to know, well, what do you want to be remembered for? What, what is your life all about? Is there value to your life? It helps you to think about where are you going? You know, you got to think about that. So I spoke with her last night and she was in good spirit. She will uh, ye yell her testimony from the mountains. Amen, Antonio. Yes, yes, she will. And, you know, this, this she will, Antonio Holly, I know I am calling uh, to intercede for my family. Yes. And so, you know, you, by faith, you hold on to God's unchanging. Get the scripture. This is the opportunity to dig into the word. Hallelujah. And look for this. Look, look up scripture that goes and corresponds with this need and then quote them, recite them, study them, get them deep into your, your spirit, man, so that you believe that when the enemy brings up doubt and discouragement. You can, you can refute him with the word of God. And, you know, you are a blessing. Okay, let me read my notes because that is what, what you just said too, is that you are a blessing machine. I have this down too, that you are a blessing machine and you're going to bring about positive change. Uh, sometimes, uh, my brother gave this daily bread. He gives these little um, things from the daily bread. And it says, sometimes God doesn't change your situation because he's trying to change your heart. And I thought that that was so good because I had that word. I rest on his unchanging grace. And then for the daily bread from my brother, when I looked on my um, phone, 
Um, he says, sometimes God doesn't change your situation because he's trying to change your heart. Mm -hmm. So um, generosity. God is generous to us through others. That was another word. And, and, it's, and I got the word blessing machine. Blessed to be a blessing. That you are blessed to be a blessing. Bringing positive change to the life of others. So this is your opportunity to speak those words of comfort and bring change into your family. This may be the catalyst, the thing that God is going to use to shift your family members into faith. Hallelujah. So we, we speak life into your family. We, we agree with you. We stand with you, Antonio. We speak life. Hallelujah. We speak life into Antonio's family. We speak life that this is the thing that will change. This it will change the uh, situation. Hallelujah. This will change the situation. So we, you will continue to build the habits of being a blessing to others. And this is an opportunity also to sow into other people's lives. Yes. So the strength that you've been gaining and building up, this is the opportunity to sow into other people's lives. Yeah. Romans 6, 14, for sin will not rule over you because you are not under law, but under grace. Yes. Uh, that's from Francesca. Sowing into other people's lives. This is your opportunity, Antonio, to sow into the lives of your family members. Mm -hmm. When I say sow into you, sow time, your words, your prayers, um, your, uh, the, uh, the, your love, your joy, your peace. Sow into them. Find out what each person needs and sow into them. Hallelujah. 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 The king of wisdom, Solomon, wrote a lot of Proverbs, and his father, King David, wrote Psalms. You are ready for battle. Antonio says, Thelma. Yes. So, so into the people's, look at, you know, that might be a really good exercise for you to look at your family members and see what they need more of. What can you sow into them? There's some of them that need your time. Some of them need some scripture. Some of them need a word of encouragement. Some of them may need um, your prayers, you know, deep praying. Uh, some of them may need some guidance, some counsel. What is it that each person, like what, you know, the needs of your daughter is different from the needs of your son and different from the needs of your sister or her, her family members and whatnot. What is it that you can give that God has put into you that you can sow into other people's lives? And so how do we overcome spiritual battles of the mind? I like this, um, what Dr. David Jeremiah says. He says, the spiritual battlefield. Your mind is the spiritual battlefield. We must weigh every thought. Um, and the weighing every thought is how we win in the battle of the mind. Is it a lie? What Satan has said, is it a lie? If it's a lie, then you wage battle on it. Is it dishonoring to God? Whatever it is, then you wage battle on it. We capture it and subdue it with the truths of God's word. So how do we wage battle on the lie? Um, you, you, you could, uh, your, your sister is in ICU. You talk to her. She's encouraging her. You could say, you shall live and not die uh, to declare the words of the works of the Lord. That is how we capture and subdue it with the truths of God's word. In the word of God, it says, we shall, you know, you get that scripture. Yeah, you, should, you, you know, you get that scripture. Shall die but live to declare the words of the Lord. That she shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. That's the truth of God's word. And you stand on that. Know God's truths. You will be able to rest on his unchanging grace. So the question to ask is, the question to ask, I love this. What does the Bible say about this? That is your key question. Any problem, any situation, anything that the enemy brings into your thought processes, 
The question is, what does the Bible say about this? What is it? You're warring with the word of God. You're putting on the helmet of salvation. You're using the sword of the spirit. What does the Bible say about this? And so I'm going to read um, in from Dr. David Jeremiah. And it is uh, for Thursday for today. It says spiritual battlefield. Uh, and it reads as follows. It says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. John 8, 32. Paul's image of the believer's spiritual armor in Ephesians 6, um, 10 through 17 clearly suggests the, the activity of warfare. And warfare suggests there will be captives. But in spiritual warfare, there are no physical conflicts or captives. Indeed, Paul says elsewhere that our battles are not in the physical realm as worldly battles are in 2 Corinthians 10, 3. So whom or what are we fighting? And whom or what do we take captive in order to win? It has been rightly suggested that spiritual warfare takes place between the ears. <laughs> right here. That's where the spiritual warfare happens. That is in the mind. That's where history first spiritual battle took place. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had to weigh Satan's words against God's words and make a choice. The activity of the mind. They should have done what Paul says. We should do. We should do. Take every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10.5. You must weigh every thought. If it is a lie or dishonoring God, we capture that thought and subdue it with the truths of God's word. So do you get this technique? This is a strategy. This is a strategy because what Satan has done, this has happened with Adam and Eve, and he tries to do the same thing with every single human being. Listen to what he did in the garden. In the garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had to weigh Satan's words against God's words and make a choice. The activity of the mind. They should have done what Paul says. We should do, which is to take, this is the strategy. Are you listening? Somebody type this strategy in the, in the chat. Every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Take every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Type that in. Say, I will take every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. According to 2 Corinthians 10, 5. We must weigh every thought. I will weigh every thought. If it is a lie... Or dishonoring to God, we capture that thought and we subdue the thought. And how do you subdue those negative thoughts? With the truth of God's word. That's why you got to know scripture. You got to know the word of God. We can only find victorious freedom by knowing God's truth. John 8, 32. So in the turning point, I love this turning point. It says, Every good spiritual warrior constantly asks himself this question. Are you a spiritual warrior? Well, the question that you should be asking yourself, what does the Bible say about this? And this is from Stu Weber. Stu Weber. What does the Bible say about this? That's why we are studying the Bible. We've got to know the word of God. Um, I think I saw Christy Lewis. Hey, Christy. Francesca, good morning, sister. It has been a blessing to get a chance to see you. And a Yankee sister home said, hey, Christy Lewis, how are you? So good to have you pop in. I really love that. Yeah, and so that is what we, we war um, against an enemy. And I had this uh, identifying the enemy. How do you identify the enemy? You identify the enemy by the words that he says, his lies. Mm-hmm. Um, I love this is that 
uh, he gives an example about the Six Day War, Dr. David Jeremiah and he here, and he says um, that when Israel was fighting against Egypt, in 19 in the 1967 war uh there it says that to the end yavrik spies infiltrated every level of egypt's armed services especially the air force the spies provided complete information about pilots commanders schedules radar battle codes communication networks and the personal schedules of senior egyptian air force officials when they were most likely to be away from their posts and unable to coordinate operations. The result is that swift, decisive victory of Israel over Egypt. Israel launched a surprise attack on the Egyptian Air Force in pre-dawn hours of June 5th, striking 18 of Egypt's Air Force bases, blowing up airplanes and runways and destroying support facilities. The Egyptians lost over 300 of their 420 combat aircrafts, 100 of their uh, 350 combat pilots. By June 10, six days later, Israel dominated their enemies, capturing the Gaza Strip, the Sinai Peninsula, the West Bank of the Jordan River, and the Golan Heights in northern Israel as a defensive buffer against Syria. No matter how well one knows his enemy, most major wars between nations last longer than six days, but without knowing one's enemy, they could last much longer. When it comes to spiritual warfare, too many Christians live, uh, live in spiritual defeat because they don't know their enemy and his strategies for defeating them. If they even believe in him, that is. Satan loves to convince Christians that he is a harmless myth a legend uncovered in the sands of time. And so that is what is happening. Many people don't believe that there is a Satan, that, it, that there is a hell, um, and that he is, his, his aim is to bring as many people to hell because he's bitter. Um, and I love this. They talk about uh, Martin Luther, who lived... Uh, who, who was going through his processes. And one of the things that he did, because he wasn't sleeping very well, he said this. He said, uh, this is how he took control. Martin Luther, based on his writings, was well familiar with the devil's tactics. He even wrote, when I go to bed, the devil is always waiting for me. And when he begins to plague me, I give him this answer. I say, devil, I must sleep. That's God's command. Work by day, sleep by night. So go away. So Martin Luther, uh, to Martin Luther, the devil was a real being, not an abstract idea. So when the enemy tries to come in like a flood, you've got to talk back to him, the word of God. And I like this because there are times when you have trouble on your mind, things that are trying to rob your sleep. You need to say, Say to the devil, I need to say to the devil, I must sleep. That's God's command. Work by day, sleep by night. So go away, devil. You know, speak back to the devil. Tell him what God says. So be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We have the strength to be strong in the Lord. And I, I like this. He says Satan's personality. Satan is given many names in scripture, uh, the following um, being just some of them. He's the adversary. He's the accuser of the brethren. He's the angel of light, the deceiver. He's the destroyer. He's the evil one. He's the murderer. He's the prince, the serpent, and the tempter. And all of the names given to him represent various facets of his personality and strategies. So Satan originated in heaven as a wise and beautiful angel. Isaiah 14, 12, Ezekiel 28, 12, 14 through 15. Isaiah tells us that while he was named Lucifer, the son of the morning and served in God's court, this is what happened to Satan. He got full of pride. That was his downfall, pride. 
pride rose up in Satan's heart and he purposed to become like God. He pride. So if you are prideful, be careful. Pride goes before a fall. That's what Proverbs says. Um, Isaiah 14, 12, 14 says, when Lucifer challenged God's supremacy, Lucifer challenged God's supremacy in heaven. God cast him out of heaven down to earth. Lucifer and all the angels had free will just as we do. And see, that's what people don't understand. That Luc the angels have free will. The angels have free they were they're created beings but they they have the free will to serve God. They don't they're not forced. They're not robots. Angels have the choice. And that's why we're going to judge the angels. You know, we part of the judgment of the role of the saints is to judge the angels. Yes. So uh, Luc uh Lucifer's will uh um Lucifer and all his angels had free will, just as we do, and the exercise of Luc Lucifer's will, and that of many angels who rebelled with him, cost him an honored place in heaven. After his rebellion, he realized that he, he did the wrong thing. The first sin we know about in the universe was Lucifer's sin of pride. Sin of pride. And... Um, C.S. Lewis wrote, the essential vice, the utmost evil is pride. Unchastity, anger, greed, drunkenness, and all of that are mere uh, flea bites in comparison. It, is, it was through pride that the devil became the devil. Pride leads to every other vice. It is the complete anti-God state of mind. I love that. So listen to what pride is. Pride leads to every other vice. And it is the complete anti-God state of mind. Anytime you think, well, I can do this. I don't need, you know, oh, I don't need her money. I don't need her help. I don't need this. I, I'm, you know, when you get full of pride you have anything, know that that is antichrist. That's an antichrist state of mind. Uh, say, um, he is a prince. Satan is the leader of evil here on earth. The Bible calls Satan the prince of this world three times. He is also called the prince of the power of the ear. As the prince of this world, Satan is in charge of evil men. As the prince of the power of the ear, he is in charge of evil spirits. In other words, Satan is the leader of evil. He is a ruler. He's a ruler. This He rules the kingdom of darkness. He is a god, small g, lowercase Gee, he is the God of this age. This is, he, he rules this age. The power to blind the minds of unbelieving to the light of the gospel. We normally associate a God with a religion, and that is perfectly appropriate here. Satan definitely has his own religion, Satanism. He has his own church, the church of Satan. His own gospel, his own ministers, his own doctrines, his own communion table and cup. His goal, this is what Satan does. His goal is to counterfeit everything God does so as to lead astray the unwary and his religion serves the purpose. Satan's power. He, this may be the question most Christians have about Satan. How powerful is he? Does he have the power to hurt us as well as harass us? For starters, 2 Thessalonians 2.9 says that Satan's works are often accompanied by all power signs and lying wonders. So he does have supernatural power as well as the power of death and the power of, of a stalking lion. There is no question that Satan has power, but we should not make the mistake of thinking he has power equal to God. He does not have the same equal power to God. And people like to think that the devil is equal to God, but he is not. Satan is not equal or opposite of God in position nor in power. Michael, the archangel, is Satan's opposite, both being created beings. Okay, Satan is a created being. And Michael, the archangel, is his his counterpart is his equal all right god is infinite and eternal satan is created and a limited angel 
When the devil comes in and tries to act like he is God, he is not. He is limited. And God laughs at him. The best way to remember Satan's limited power is by remembering 1 John 4.4. 4. He who is in you is greater. When you have Jesus Christ in you, he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Satan's power is great compared to ours, but not even the same league as God's power. God has Satan on a leash, Job 1, 2, and there he remains in spite of appearances until he will be cast into the lake of fire where he will live in torment forever. So Satan's purposes. There are many action verbs attached to Satan's activities in scripture. Uh, Satan deceives, Satan divides, and Satan destroys. He is a great deceiver. He is a, a great divider, and he's a great destroyer. He is the counterfeit. Satan is also a counterfeiter, one who always has a slightly different and wrong take on God's words and actions. If you know that he is a deceiver, that's what he is using at such great force right now in the world, is to counterfeit, to deceive the deception that's going on. So in the last days, even the elect sex would be de deceived. He tried to even deceive Christians. Christians are being attacked with deception. It's so thick in the Protestant church, in the evangelical church. Deception, deceiving, making thinking wrong is right, that they're doing stuff for God's glory. And it's evil. Deception on both Political parties on the left and the right. Deception. Oh, man. The greatest defense against Satan the deceiver is thor uh, thoroughly working knowledge of the word of God. The way that you overcome the deceiving is w the working knowledge of God's word. Working knowledge of the word of God. you got to know the word. He is the great divider. Satan is still sowing seeds of division in the body of Christ through lies, jealousy, pride, power, and finances. And we see that. You have the Republican evangelicals who are not for the Democratic, you know, church. Right? And they're all supposed to, they all call in the name of Jesus. But such great division. Such great division. And he's, he's just laughing, laughing at the church, laughing at them. He is the great destroyer. And the thing is, is he's making people, both sides compromise the word of God. The God says, do not, to love your enemies, the, the evangelicals, love your enemies, do good to them that persecute you, say all mine are of evil against you falsely, to pray for your elected officials, not to hate, to respect the authorities, and then on the other side, you got this, you know, um, you know, about Unitarianism and this whole idea of every God is the same God and accept everybody and uh, what do they call it, inclusion practices and stuff. You know, that, that, that's not God. God's kingdom, you know. Oh, uh, and, and it's, just, it's just a lot of deception, you know, compromise, compromise, compromise. Deception, division. He is a great destroyer. Yes, he destroys. It is an arresting insight for young Christians to gain. God does not always protect us from the difficulties. Now, this is something that you are going to experience difficulties in life. But God does not always protect us from difficulties of life, even when we are doing our best to serve him. And that includes difficulties that are orchestrated by Satan himself. But Satan's goal is creating adversity, of course. It is to discourage us to the point that we will at least give up serving the Lord, if not give up the faith altogether. And so we've got to be aware that things may arise in your life, but don't give up God. For God I live and for God I die. That is our anthem. That is our decision that for God I live and for God I will die. That I will serve God. That... Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to you. If I give up God, then what will I do? 
you know, that's what I'm thinking. If, if I decide to do it my way, to give up God, to not trust God, then who am I going to trust? There's nothing, nothing out there that's trustworthy. I got to trust God. Hallelujah. Who am I going to turn to? Um, Donald Trump? No. Joe Biden? No. The American government? No. Who? Who else is there? What else has power? Money? No. No, I'm going to depend on God. My family? No. My children? No. Mm -mm. God, Jesus Christ, on Christ the solid rock I stand. And that's why when I got this word this morning, I rest on his unchanging grace. I rest on his unchanging grace. I rest on his unchanging grace. I stand on Christ the solid rock I stand. All the other ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking. I can't even trust myself. No, I can't even trust me. You know, I just, I'm trying to just be faithful to my own self, my own decision. I can't even trust myself because I don't know the future. I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know. I got to lean on his unchanging grace. I got to call on God, asking God, what is up? What does the Bible say about this? God, what do you think? Ask him, pray, lean on him, depend on him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Why? Because I want to live with Jesus. So finally, here, yeah, Satan replied that the, the tool, listen to this. I read this and I was like, oh, wow. He says, I read a story once about Satan going out of business selling all his tools at a diabolical type garage sale. Hate, envy, jealousy, greed, all his tools were spread out on a table to be examined. Off to the side lay a small wedge sharp tool that was more expensive than all the rest. When asked why the small tool was the most expensive, listen to Satan's response. Satan replied that the tool was discouragement. The tool was discouragement. He explained that he could use discouragement to pry open a human heart better than any other tool. Once discouragement gets inside, the devil said all the other tools can do their work. Discouragement. Don't be discouraged. That's why Jesus kept saying, fear not. How many times does he, fear not my little flock. Fear not, fear not. Be strong, have courage. Fear not, fear. If you, if you counted how many times the Bible tells us to fear not, do not be discouraged. Fear not, fear not, fear not. Because fear then leads to hate, envy, jealousy, greed, and all kinds of other things. However, Satan has not gone out of business and will not until God puts him out of business at the end of time. Until then, he is walking about seeking whom he may devour. The believer is helpless against the devil except when he or she is clothed in the armor of God. And we've been talking about Ephesians, putting on the whole armor of God. We cannot defend ourselves against his direct or indirect attacks in our own strength, it is only as we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Continue to say, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Come on, put it in the chat. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That we can walk in the victory God has planned for us. Martin Luther, besides being the father of the Protestant Reformation, was a great lover of music as part of his defense against the devil. So one of the things that we have as a defense is music, is a fear and lovely gift of God, which has often wakened and moved me. Music drives away the devil and makes people happy. That's why the devil fights against people with music. Music drives away the devil and makes people happy. Music, music is, is the, is what God has given us as a gift. So if you sing, sing. If you write music, write music. If you uh, have um, 
play music. Right now I have music playing, gospel music playing, because it fights the enemy. Music drives away the devil and makes people happy. Next, after theology, I give to music the highest place and the greatest honor. Music. Experience proves that next to the word of God, only music deserves to be extolled as the mistress and governess of the feelings of the human heart. We know that to the devil, music is distasteful and insufferable. My heart bubbles up and overflows in response to music, which has so often refreshed me and delivered me from the plagues of the enemy. As evidence of his love of music and his deep understanding of the theology of spiritual warfare, Lucifer pens some of the most powerful and accurate words ever written in the subject in his hymn, A Mighty Fortress. Luther, Luther, pen, A Mighty Fortress is our God. He wrote, For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. Well. His craft and power are great and armed with cruel hate. On earth is not his equal. He then goes on to clarify that we cannot defeat Satan in our own. Did we in our own strength confide our striving would be losing? We are not the right man on our side, the man of God on our own choosing. Just ask who that may be. Christ Jesus, it is he. Lord, listen to this, Lord Sabahoeth, his name from age to age the same. He must win the battle. A mighty fortress is our God, our bulwark ever, never failing. That's what it is. That my, that's the song that they're talking about. But I woke up with them, with this. I rest on his unchanging grace. I rest on his unchanging grace. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. My faith is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but lowly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. I think that this has been a good study. Spiritual Warfare, Armor of the Believer by David J Jeremiah, Dr. David Jeremiah. And this is what God wanted us to learn today. The rest on his unchanging grace. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. So that is it for today. That is it for today. Um, so tomorrow, uh, t this evening, I we were gonna are we gonna still meet with you gonna still meet with me? I'm gonna send out an email to you. Thelma and Francesca with the Google Meets. It's not going to be a long meeting. I just want to make sure that I'm able to um, to welcome you into the meeting and to set up a meeting at three. Yes. So we will do that for tomorrow. I mean today at three Eastern Standard Time. Um, I'm going to send. I'm going to work on that right now. Right after I finish with you all, I will. Um, send set up a uh, Google Meets, and if it doesn't work, <laughs> if you oh, I pray that it works. We'll try again. Um, and um, Antonio, I'm gonna Francesca. Would you like to meet with me tomorrow? Uh, we can meet and have a, a talk about the garden and what you're doing in your garden as far as growing and relate that to the gardener of our souls, that God is our gardener. 
Um, so if you'd like to meet with me tomorrow, Francesca, um, we will do it. All right. Absolutely. Okay. So you can come on with me tomorrow. I haven't had you on for a while because uh, we were, we were so into the March madness. <laughs> miracle. March miracle. The miraculous. Yes. So we're going to talk some garden tomorrow. Um, we'll talk about the garden. Um, and you could, you could, yeah, we could talk about, um, you you could bring some, show us some of your, your seedlings, what you're growing in your garden and how does that represent, you know, the fruit of the spirit and growing the garden of one's heart. That's the theme. So get ready to talk. You're going to do all and talk seeds. Yes. And all of that. Okay. So we, we will be talking about that. Um, Antonio, we will keep you in prayer. Um, I have the cable guy coming between two and four, but I can, I can make it work. Okay, no problem. I'm not gonna keep you long. Um, it's just I just want to just check to see. I mean, if that doesn't work, we could do it another time. I just want to see if the uh, if the the Google Meets works, um, Thelma. That's that's it. I mean, I can. I, I can I just want to make sure that it works and that I know how to do it because I might need some practicing all right so um, I just I have to be able to welcome you into and he will have to listen to me talk again sister Thelma just like the other guy did yesterday <laughs> oh okay yeah oh yeah that was really good I'm glad we hung I'm glad I hung around um, Francesca, that was very good. Yeah, that worked out really good. And, uh, you, you were on the spot. You got to see that you got to be in my, my pastor would say, you got to be in season and out of season. You got to be ready at every time for, for what is next. Um, let me just read Proverbs real quick. Proverbs 18. I just, I did not remember that. Um, yeah, so let's read Proverbs 18 real quick. I'm going to just read it real quick in the, uh, wait a moment, where, why is this acting out? There we go. I'm going to read it in the message translation, and then I'm going to bid you good day, because I stayed long here. Words kill, words give life. Are you ready? Loners who care only for themselves spit on the common good. Fools care nothing for thoughtful discourse. All they do is run off at the mouth. When wickedness arrives, shame's not far behind. Contempt for life is contemptible. Many words rush along like rivers in flood, but deep wisdom flows up from artery springs. It's not right to go easy on the guilty or come down hard on the innocent. The words of a fool start fights. Do him a favor and gag him. Fools are undone by their big mouths. Their souls are crushed by their words. Listening to gossip is like eating cheap candy. That's a good one. Listening to gossip is like eating cheap candy. That's like listening to MSNBC, listening to Fox News, listening to CNN and the news is like listening to cheap candy. Do you really want junk like that in your belly? Slack habits and sloppy work are as bad as vandalism. God's name is a place of protection. Good people can run there and be safe. Amen. That is, uh, that is a good one. God's name is a place. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and, is, and are safe. That's probably uh, what it says in the KJV, KJV Proverbs 18.10. The rich think their wealth protects them. They imagine themselves safe behind it. Pride first, then the crash. But humility is per, per, uh, precursor to honor. L listen to this. We just talked about pride. Pride first, then the crash. Mm -hmm. But humility is the precursor to honor. To humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will lift you up. That's the verse that comes to mind. Answering before listening is both stupid and rude. A healthy spirit con uh, conquers adversity, but what can you do? when the spirit is crushed. Wise men and women are always learning, always listening for fresh insight. A gift gets attention. It buys the attention of 
um, imminent, imminent people. The first speech in a court case is always convincing until the cross-examination starts. You may have to draw straws when faced with a tough decision. Do favor and win a friend forever. Nothing can untie that bond. Words satisfy the mind as much as fruit does the stomach. Good talk is as gratifying as a good harvest. Words kill, words give life. They're either poison or fruit you choose. Find a good spouse, you find a good life. And even more, the favor of God. The poor speak in soft supplication. The rich bark out answers. Friends come and friends go, but a true friend sticks by you like family. And that's what we are. <laughs> friends come, friends go, but a true friend sticks to you like family. You are my wisdom collection, connection family. We're an online family. Hallelujah. We stick with one another. Thank you so much. You are my family. All right, my online wisdom connection family. Woohoo! 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 Proverbs 18, 8, 10 in the amp. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run runs to it. Oh, wait a moment. The righteous runs to it and is safe, set on high, far above evil. Yay! Love it, Thelma. Francesca says, Proverbs 18.4, TPT, words of wisdom are like a fresh flowing brook, like deep waters that spring forth from within, bubbling up inside the one with understanding. Um, I like that. You want to talk about that tomorrow, Francesca? That is what you're going to talk about tomorrow. We're going to talk about spring forth. Oh, Proverbs 18.4, get your message together. Spring forth. 18.4. You know... That we're going to talk about that tomorrow, okay? Proverbs 18. Oh, wait a minute. Proverbs 18.4. Spring forth. We're going to talk about spring forth tomorrow. Ooh, that's going to be good. You got five stars yesterday, a thousand stars to Stella. <laughs> Proverbs 18.22, when a man finds a wife, he has found a treasure, for she is the gift of God to bring him joy and pleasure. But the one who divorces a good woman loses what is good from his house. Okay. Find, locate, identify. Fourth, uh, Faithful, openly receiving truth and honesty. I wrote it down for tomorrow. Good. Yay, we're going to talk about spring forth. Spring forth, spring forth. How exciting, because I am going to be springing forth too. I am, I am so excited about getting started, planting my seeds and getting them in the ground strong. In prayer, we seek the throne of God's righteousness with our ongoing need of grace. Yes. Oh, Thelma, you're so good. Thelma, could you put that comment in the, that, that you have there in the chat, in the comment section? When we come off, could you type that into the comment section for me, please, uh, so that I can have that. That is beautiful. You too, Francesca. You could put yours in the comment section. I think that is a good thing for us to do, to leave those comments so that when people turn, uh, click on it, they can read your comments. And that, that, that's a strong word. Yeah, let's start doing that. Putting um, after you're finished to put put your work in words into your comments section. So if people don't read the chat, they'll read the comments next. And that will get the comments going. Uh, you know who did a long comment commentary on one of my um, BJ? Oh my goodness, BJ just filled up the comments section. As I was going, she just put typed in the comments like if she was going through the chat. Good day, everyone. Have a great day. Hi, darling. How are you? Good morning. So good to have you here. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So anytime you are listening to uh, one of the um, to one of the messages and you are able, you're near your phone or you're depending on what you're listening in, in put just write it out like a comment like you're in the chat in the comment section 
It made me think of 2024. We are springing forth. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And that way, because um, I got so blessed by BJ's comments on that particular uh, scripture. And it let me know, too, that it was relevant to her life. It was just so good. I enjoyed that. All right. So that's it for this beautiful day. And uh, yesterday, I got so much work done. Oh, my God. I'm so happy. You guys, I'm so happy. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Know that you got the victory and that the enemy doesn't have anything over us, that we have Jesus. And we have uh, Yahweh Sabahoth. We have the angels of the Lord. We have each other. You bring me so much joy. I just want you to know how much I value each and every one of you. Thank you so much for being a part of this ministry, this word. I just am feeling so blessed um, that my life is running the way it is and that I'm able to do this. Um, so we don't want to lose the momentum. Thank you, Francesca. We don't want to lose the momentum and the joy of the Lord, okay? And Antonio, we keep you in prayer. Your words are so powerful um, and you are such a blessing to us. Um, and thank you so much for being with us. Um, I think our next thing, Antonio, be blessed all. I pray blessings for the chat and families. Thank you. Antonio, next week we're going to start talking about NBA, all right? Because the NBA finals are now are coming up. The National Basketball Association. And I, I know that the Celtics are number one. Celtics are number one. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about who we think is gonna win and what's 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 up. All right. So get ready. Not this week, but next week we can we can come together and talk sports again. How's that? That's gonna be fun. <laughs> Are you game? Are you game, Antonio? Yeah, Sister Captain, thank you kindly for keeping me energized and excited to read and study God's word. A new venture for me. MVA, yay! That's right. Are, are you, who's your team? Is, are you a Celtics, Athelma? Does, does Connecticut have a team? I, I don't think Connecticut has a team. Who do you root for in the NBA? But anyway, that's beside the point. Let me let you go. And um, have a good one, everybody. Thank you. See you tomorrow. God willing. Be blessed. Love you. Trustworthy Thursday. Yes, we can lean on God. Rest in God and, and just, you know, just rest in God. Music. Okay, good. Music. That's good, Thelma. Music. Let the joy of the Lord bubble up with you through the music. Okay? Have a great day. Love you all. Bye. You all left me so happy. Oh, that's good. <laughs>